Hello everyone. Yes, I'm hot. It is burning up in hot Atlanta. Listen, um, for those future fashion designers, um, those that have fashion, um, starting a label or getting a label up and going, I have, um, as we say, um, some information that I really need to give you um, so that you can have a um, good understanding of this industry that you're embarking into, that you're getting off into. Um, when you do not know how to sew, you it leaves you in a vulnerable place because here you are, you have all these designs, and you don't know how to put those designs together, but yet you have customers and you have clientele that like your design and want to purchase your design. Okay, you go to a seamstress and you have a seamstress make something for you. You paid uh, very little to have made. Then um, you go and you mark the product up um, that you see fit so where you're able to make a profit. Well, the seamstress still has to eat as well. So that seamstress, if she's smart or he's smart, the tailor, would take that design that they designed for you and turn around and make money off of it. It is a dirty business, but my mama always had a saying, if you don't pay now, you're going to pay later. So sewing and design goes hand in hand. Um, if you are, let's say you're a millionaire. Well, if you're a millionaire, um, you can afford your copyrights. You can afford um, um, marketing to, to market your product. You can afford a team of seamstress to work for you and you're able to pay them fair wages. Fair wages now. Um, that way your product will have more success because the group of people that you're working with see your vision. They're working with you to help your vision come to pass. But if you're a type of person that just want to have this product made so you can make a quick buck and make an income coming in and you pay a person the bare minimum to make this because they made it for you so to make your to make it happen for you basically. If I was that seamstress and I'm knowing that I'm making something five dollars a piece. $10 a piece and I see an opportunity to where I'm able to make this design because I'm the, I'm the sewer. I can sew. You can't. I'm going to sew it and I'm going to sell it because I need to eat. That is what's happened to Coach. That is what's happening to Louis Vuitton. People are buying knockoffs, Coach bags and they buy knockoff Louis Vuitton bags. Why? Because those companies go in those countries and they have things made for bare minimum and then they ex they thinking that these people are going to sit up here and make all this stuff for you and you selling purses for 5 and 6 and 15 and $2,500 and you only paid $2, less than $2 to have this made. So if I happen to sell it for $25, it's a problem. That's what happens with greed. So, Brahmin, I'm using these, these analogies to give you an example. Brahmin is another purse. Brahmin purses are only made in the United States of America, and they're made in the factory, and they pay their people fair wages. That's why you pay three, dollars $400 for a purse and $200 for a wallet. That's, why, that's what makes them different. They don't, you're not going to find a knockoff. In order to keep knockoffs from happening, you need to know how to sew. That's what I'm really trying to say. You need to learn how to sew. What to being that lazy and 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 not taking out that time uh, to put forth. This is your investment. If you got an online online boutique and you having things made to keep your online boutique up and going. And if that person decided they don't want to sew for you anymore, you know, 
then what you gonna do? How your money, your money just gonna come to a halt? Or if you go somewhere to another seamstress where you was getting it ten dollars per piece, now this seamstress gonna market on that and gonna say, I want twenty dollars. So now you got to go up on on your prices because you're paying more. But those simple itty bitty things that you could be sewing and putting together, you cutting out the middleman. And what I'm finding is you have these fly by night boutiques, online boutiques, fashion designers. They get in it and then they find out that it's going to take work and it's going to take effort and they're going to have to put in some time and they're not wanting to put that time in. Sometimes people just get some, I find some people get things just because someone else got it or they have the extra money to spend, but really not dedicated to it. You're not going to be Ralph Lauren. I'm just telling you to your face. You're not going to be a Ralph Lauren because you're not trying to be a Ralph Lauren. Everybody knows the story of Ralph Lauren. And Ralph Lauren was a tailor, worked in a sweatshop, got his big break with Bloomingdale's, making bow ties and ties. That's how he got started. He believed in his product. Did he have somebody make his product? No, he made it himself. He started out making it himself. Now he has a team of designers that make clothes for him, that design clothes for him, and he puts out millions of dollars a year because they on payroll, they on salary. So here you are, you barely make, you don't even make $100,000 a year. And you trying to do it like Ralph Lauren, and you are not at Ralph Lauren level. You got to start somewhere. You gonna have to learn how to sew. You can go around it all you want to, but you are going to have to learn how to sew to truly be successful in this business. Um, Atlanta Future Fashion Designers, or as some would say, Future Fashion Designers of Atlanta, that's on Facebook. Sewing for Dollars Sewing Academy is also on Facebook where we meet up and we link up with one another because and everyone that is that I'm connected to know how to sew because we know the labor that it takes the hard work that goes into it and so we sharpen one another what I'm finding is as I'm in this field that I'm finding that people want the quick fix situation. Oh, I want you to make it for me. I'll make it for you if you want it made. But if you paying me five and ten dollars a piece and you come in with ten and twenty pieces at a time. And then you turn around and you selling each item $199, uh, $80, $85, and you only pay me $5 to make the product. I'm going to be like, well, wait a minute. Why don't I just make the product and get the $85? You see what I'm saying? Because you ain't, you're not paying me a fair wage from the beginning. Now, I work, I do do piecework for different people. But... Um, they pay me extremely well. And that is the respect that you have to have for a seamstress. A lot of times people don't have respect for the seamstress. They treat the seamstress as if she's a slave because they've been doing it for so long. They've been doing it for so long that the seamstress has been treated as a slave. But what they fail to realize is there was a time and day where everybody had to make their clothes. But if you made clothes that were exceptionally nice, your gift brought you before kings and queens. See? And they put you on payroll and they pay you a living salary. There's a man right now makes clothes for the Queen of England. That's all his job is, is to make clothes for the Queen of England. And he's doing real good. Real good. 
So I hope that uh, this video was helpful for you to get you an understanding about this industry, that what you're going off into, what you're thinking about going off into, you need to learn how to sew. And I'm done. I'm, I can't tell you nothing else.